Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. This is Ecology Craft, and today we're going to be going over biomes. It's a word in ecology that we use for large biological communities shaped by climate and usually defined by their distinctive plant and animal life. However, for Gen Z, our first exposure to biomes was in Minecraft. Just like in real life, Minecraft's terrestrial biomes can be categorized by their temperature and water availability. Though in Minecraft, biomes are distributed across the map randomly, in real life, temperature and precipitation differences result from the tilted axis of the Earth warming the equator more evenly, creating copious amounts of warm and therefore rising moist air which flows out and away from the equator. The consistent sunlight and high precipitation allows for dense tropical rainforests to grow. Since there is so much light and water to go around, the soils of this biome are often nutrient poor as every last drop is incorporated into plant matter. It's an extremely diverse biome as well. As precipitation generated at the equator drifts towards the edge of the tropics and deposits more and more of its water, biomes like the tropical savanna and seasonal tropical forests begin to appear, both of which experience high temperatures with varying levels of periodic drought broken by seasonal rains. In tropical savannas, water is even more scarce, and so the landscape is dominated by herbaceous plants like grasses that, unlike woody plants, can quickly regrow all of their stems and leaves during the rainy season after letting them die away when it gets dry. The few woody plants that can grow in this condition are scarce, few fast-growing, deep-rooted trees like the acacia tree. At around 30 degrees north and south, precipitation has dropped off almost completely from the equator and deserts abound. Their relative closeness to the equator and lack of tree cover allows temperatures to soar significantly higher than at the equator. But that same lack of tree cover causes temperatures to plummet at night. The lack of water prevents most plants from surviving. Extreme water prevention measures, like a total lack of leaves, allow plants like cacti to thrive in this biome. Scarce water and few plants also prevent decomposition from occurring, which keeps the soil rocky and nutrient poor. Between 30 and 60 degrees, mid-latitude precipitation cells begin to take effect and more temperate but wetter biomes are found. In drier, more inland areas which experience periodic drought, temperate plains are found. Much like Minecraft Plains biome, which are similar to the savanna, they only have a sparse smattering of woody plants. In temperate areas with more precipitation, there are temperate forests which, like seasonal tropical forests, drop their leaves. But with temperate forests, it is in response to extremely cold and dark winters, rather than a dry season. This combination of moderate rainfall and temperatures with seasonal dormancy in response to cold winters allows for rich soils. In these biomes, plenty of plants manage to grow and get decomposed every year, but not at the intense all-encompassing rate of tropical rainforests. Closer to the poles, beyond these temperate biomes, is the boreal forests, also known as taiga, which steadily transition to the scarcely vegetated and even cooler tundra. The primary limiting factor on plant growth are the hard, year-long winters. This forces all plant life into dormancy and halts decomposition as the ground freezes. The trees adapted to the taiga are coniferous and adapt to the harsh climate by retaining their needle-like leaves through the winter to avoid having to grow a new set like deciduous trees do every spring. Biomes are a useful means of categorizing the world around us because they can help highlight how a common environment can lead to ecological trends like convergent evolution. Understanding how trends in the climate across the globe produces biomes can help us find answers to conservation and evolution. Some biomes are critically threatened by human interference and climate change. For instance, temperate forests are the most densely inhabited biome. The deep rich soils of plains have led to many of them being converted to agriculture and 50% of the rainforests have been lost to logging. We hope this video has allowed you to visualize real-world biomes better and inspired some thought at how these biomes have changed over time. 